How was the submarine made? Doesn't it sound fascinating to see a man-made object that can travel deep into the depths of the ocean? The submarine invites us on a thrilling adventure beneath the waves to explore mysteries that have been hidden away for centuries. Imagine the secrets waiting in the silent, shadowy world below, where darkness covers incredible wonders waiting to be discovered. But have you ever wondered how the first submarine was made, and how modern ones are made? In this video, we will share the untold story of the submarine, showing you just how this amazing piece of technology was created and how it evolved year after year. So, let's dive in. The history of the submarine is way older than most of you think. It's even many centuries older than the First World War. It all dates back to 1578, long before the Industrial Revolution or the invention of modern machinery, when William Bourne, an English mathematician, came up with the first design for a submarine. But what materials did he propose for such a groundbreaking invention? And if you're picturing a sleek metal vessel, think again. Bourne's innovative design called for two hulls constructed not from steel, but from wood and leather. Yet this design never saw the light of day, or the dark of the ocean depths. This leaves us with questions like, why was Bourne's submarine never built? And who took the step beyond designing to actually constructing the first working submarine? In 1620, which is 42 years after Bourne's idea, Cornelis Drebbel from the Netherlands decided to take on the challenge. Drebbel was curious and wanted to make a submarine that could actually move in water. Interestingly, he used Bourne's ideas as a starting point, but went further. Imagine trying to steer a big, heavy object in water without engines. That's what Drebbel did, but with a clever twist. He built his submarine out of wood, and then made two improved versions of this that were tested under the River Thames. And guess what? He did it using just eight oars. At that time, these submarines pushed the boundaries of what was scientifically accepted as possible. And guess what? Drebbel also introduced mechanisms to address some of the most critical challenges of underwater navigation. He used a quicksilver barometer to measure the submarine's depth beneath the water's surface, a concept far ahead of its time. He even tackled the problem of air supply by using a chemical process with saltpeter to purify the air inside the submarine, effectively generating oxygen. This allowed for longer underwater expeditions and marked an early understanding of the need for breathable air in closed environments. Later in that century, a daring French inventor, Denis Pain, made his mark by designing and constructing not one, but two submarines. The first boasted a unique square shape, a design unlike any before. However, fate had some terrible plans. This submarine met an unfortunate end when it was accidentally destroyed. Even after this failure, Pan crafted a second submarine, this time with an elegant oval shape, demonstrating an evolution in design aesthetics and functionality. Both of these pioneering vessels were crafted from metal, showcasing a significant advancement in materials used for submarine construction. During the early 18th century, the concept of submarines took a remarkable turn, thanks to Yefim Nikonov. Tasked by Peter the Great of Russia, Nikonov went on to create the first military submarine in 1720. This innovative design was formulated with the goal of approaching enemy ships undetected to deploy a combustible mixture through tubes extending to the water's surface. A notable feature of this submarine was the inclusion of an airlock, an idea that could make the vessel and its crew safe from implosions when ascending rapidly. Unfortunately, the ambitious project came to an unforeseen halt following the death of Peter the Great in 1725, leaving Nikonov's incredible work unfinished. Then, in 1747, a new and improved design was introduced that incorporated a method to control the submarine's buoyancy. This design utilized goatskin bags, which could be filled with water to allow the submarine to descend into the ocean depths. When it was time for the submarine to rise to the surface, the water would be released from the bags. This concept was revolutionary for its time, and has remained a fundamental principle in the design of modern submarines. You will be surprised to know that today's submarines use a similar technology known as ballast tanks. Modern submarines use special tanks that work in a really smart but simple way. They fill up with water when the submarine wants to go deep underwater, and they get rid of the water when it's time to come back up. This smart idea, which might seem easy, actually solves a big engineering problem showing how cool simple solutions can be. 
And now, let's jump into 1776, an important year in the history of submarines, particularly for America. It was in this year that America introduced its very first submarine, named the Turtle. This was no ordinary vessel. It was small, yet it symbolized a giant leap in naval warfare techniques. The Turtle was unique for its time, primarily because it featured a design centered around a screw mechanism. But this was no ordinary screw. It was devised to bore holes into the hulls of enemy ships. Just think for a minute. If this tactic becomes successful, it could sink the opposition quietly and effectively. The most renowned mission for the Turtle was against the HMS Eagle. Legend has it that the Turtle attempted this daring underwater assault in 1776. However, if one were to sift through British naval records, this attack doesn't seem to exist. This discrepancy has led many to speculate. Some believe the story of the Turtle's mission was greatly exaggerated, perhaps to boost morale, or as a piece of revolutionary propaganda. Others go further, claiming the entire affair might be a work of fiction, a naval legend born out of the mists of time. Fast forward to the First World War. The development and extensive use of diesel engines marked a new chapter in submarine history. These engines powered the submarines for surface travel, offering a more efficient and reliable means of propulsion compared to previous methods. When submerged, submarines switched to electric batteries, enabling stealth and silent movement under the water. This dual-engine system catapulted the submarine into a critical role in naval warfare, establishing it as a formidable weapon. After World War II, submarine technology witnessed a revolutionary step with the advent of nuclear power. The launch of the first nuclear submarine, named the Nautilus by the U.S. Navy in 1954, marked the beginning of a new era. This innovation eliminated the need for surface air, allowing submarines to stay submerged for much longer periods and travel faster than their diesel-electric predecessors. By 1959, the strategic potential of submarines was further realized with the development of strategic submarines capable of carrying nuclear missiles, alongside attack submarines designed to sink enemy ships and other submarines. This period solidified the submarine's position as an indispensable asset in navies worldwide. During the Falklands War in 1982, a British nuclear submarine sunk the Argentine ship General Belgrano. This was the first time a nuclear submarine was used in a real fight. This shows how important submarines have become in battles, moving from just being an idea to a key part of how navies fight. Building a nuclear submarine is like putting together a huge, complicated puzzle. It mainly uses steel to make strong walls that can stand up to the deep sea's pressure. This steel is super tough for both the inside and outside parts of the submarine, and for the special tanks that help the submarine go up and down in the water. There's also copper and brass for the parts that handle electricity, aluminum for other parts of the submarine's body, and even glass and plastic for different uses. The heart of the submarine, which helps it work, relies on special materials called semiconductors that come from stuff like silicon and germanium. There's a nuclear reactor inside to keep the submarine moving fast, and for a long time, without coming up for air. This reactor runs on a powerful kind of fuel made from uranium. The submarine also carries advanced weapons, all ready to use. And each piece, from the big steel plates to the tiny electronic parts, is picked for a special reason to make sure the submarine can do its job safely and well. So, this was the entire history of how the submarine came into existence, and how it has evolved into the powerful weapon it is today. From being a simple idea to a complex and highly advanced machine, the submarine has surely come a long way. Its role in naval warfare and exploration cannot be understated, and its continuous development shows its importance in modern times. Let us know in the comments what other interesting facts or stories you know about submarines. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.